I have reached step four on my financial plan for 2024 in just three short months. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back if you're new here. My name is Melissa and I am on a low buy year. I'm doing this low buy for several reasons, but I do feel like my low buy reasons are shifting the longer I go throughout this low buy along with my mindset. So I'm going to share a little bit about that with you guys today and I'm also going to let you know how the month of March went for me. If you are new to this series, if you are just barely jumping on board, I actually started my low buy after I was done Christmas shopping. So after the first week of December, I decided I was going to go on this low buy. So although it's only the third month of March, I've been on this journey for almost four months now and quite a bit has changed. When I first started this low buy, I was trying to be financially more stable. I was trying not to spend every little disposable penny that I had. I was trying to spend more quality time and more of my disposable money on quality time with my husband and my kids. And I was trying to bring less into the home. Now, most of those are still true, and I do have a large goal that I am reaching towards, which is the main reason for this low buy, and I have briefly touched on it a few times before, but I haven't gone into detail, and that is because of court reasons. I cannot go into detail. I cannot share with you guys the details. I'm very open about a lot of things with my life, but when it comes to this particular topic, I can't be open with it. However, I can be open with what that thing is. So I intend to either renovate the house that I am currently living in with my husband or we are planning on moving. Originally, we planned to renovate our home that we are in now. That was our number one choice. But as we're going through the steps that we have to go through, which are things I cannot talk about, or am it, I'm choosing not to talk about. I don't want to talk about that side of my life here on YouTube. We are more so leaning towards moving. So with that being said, of course, I'm working on financial things. I'm making sure that my credit stays right, and I'm making sure that I am paying down any excess bill that I may have. That way, when I am ready to move, my husband and I, when I say I, I mean we, when we are ready to move, we're going to be in a really good position to move. Now the reason why I'm telling you guys this now is because I've been having a lot of unsolicited advice from quite a few people and I don't necessarily need any advice you guys. I have a plan in place which leads me to this next topic which is I am officially on step four of my financial plan that I have for myself. Since I already have a plan in place and I've already done the due diligence to create this plan and make a smart plan for myself, I don't necessarily need advice financially on what I should do. The next thing that I really want to touch on before I jump into the month is passive aggressive comments. I have never had more passive aggressive comments in my YouTube career than I do now with this journey. I cannot tell you how many people tell me just give up already, you're going to fail, you're not gonna be able to do it, you're making mistakes, etc., etc. Those are just plain out rude comments, but I also have some very passive aggressive comments. Now, more often than not, I delete these comments so you guys don't see a lot of them, but if you feel the need to leave me a passive aggressive comment, then you're probably leaving it from a negative spot and I don't necessarily need to hear that. As I mentioned, I have a plan in place, I have a goal, and I'm already on step four of my goal. So I am achieving my goals, I am achieving my low buy, I am doing all of the things that I was hoping to achieve in this low buy, and you can't sit here and tell me that I'm going to fail when I've already succeeded. And lastly, I do wanna to touch on one more thing, and that is that I am so grateful for you guys. I am so thankful for those of you that comment on every single video. I look forward to hearing your responses and hearing how your low buy is doing. There are about 20 of you guys that are doing this low buy with me, and you guys give me updates. I know exactly who you are, and I look for your comments. So please keep leaving comments down below. Please keep letting me know how your low buy is do, do, 
how your low buy is going because I thoroughly enjoy it. I enjoy having conversations with you and I feel more connected when I see you on repeat down in the comments below. Okay, the first thing that I wanna to touch on, or second rather, the first thing I wanted to mention is that I have officially reached step four in my low buy journey, or not in my low buy journey, in my financial journey. So my financial journey, although it is a part of my low buy journey, it's part of why I started my low buy, it's not all of it. So I'm really excited. Step one was pretty easily achievable. Step two was pretty easily achievable. Step three took some time. And step four, which is where I am now, is going to take even more time. And then I have step five. So step five is the finale, finale of my um, financial goals for this year. So not total, but for this year, what I wanted to achieve in this year I have five steps and I'm officially on step four. So I'm really excited. I'm really proud of myself. I'm really looking forward to conquering step four. I did write them down in my book. I am tracking my low buy, my exercise, and my shopping habits in this journal here. And I'm really excited because I got to check off box number three. Okay, the second thing that I want to jump in on is that I have done a complete 180 mentally. I used to be really excited about saving up for a bag. I do have different accounts. I have my 401k account. I have my regular savings account. I have a spending savings account. And I have my regular checking account. So all of my bills are coming out of my regular checking account. My spending saving account is for my bags. It's for my YouTube. It is for my kids. It is for doing fun activities. It's for spending. It's for having fun. I used to be really excited about watching my spending savings account grow. Now I am really excited about watching my 401k and my regular savings account grow. So now what I have been doing is I have been putting quite a bit more into my regular savings account than in my savings account. And I used to split it up differently and it definitely has changed. If I put a lot in my regular savings account, it almost was like a, this is something I gotta do. I don't really wanna do this, but I need to, or I wanna build it, but I don't really want to build it. You guys know what I'm saying. Whereas the spending account was really, really fun. Now it's complete opposite. I'm so excited to grow that savings account. The savings account is something that is towards a big goal. It's towards step five in my journey. And then of course I have my 401k account, but my my savings account for spending has been quite small and I don't feel bad or upset about that whatsoever. Number three, I kind of touched on already and that is that my husband and I have some amazing future plans for us. Our end goal, honestly, you guys, I'm just gonna be open and transparent, is we would love to move outside of Arizona. Now this is an end goal because it's a 10 year plan. We don't plan on doing that now. We do have young kids who have other parents that are here in Arizona, and I would never ever take my kids away from their other parents. That would be so unbelievably selfish of me to do. So we do have a plan in 10 years, once our kids are grown, to move outside of Arizona. And that is something that we are working towards now. It's something that we can slowly work towards, but it's really, really exciting. It's something that we've talked about quite a bit. We've daydreamed about it together. And it's something that we are working towards. But we do have smaller plans that we are working towards first, prior to that. And it's something that we're, it's the first big thing that we are doing together besides obviously getting married and raising our family and I'm just excited about it. There's nothing else to say other than I'm excited for these future plans so much more than I am excited about purchasing my next luxury bag. Okay, now let's go over week by week. How did it go? The first week of March, I have to admit, I had an extreme want or desire to go clothing shopping. It was eating at me, you guys. I was putting things in my car. I was looking at them. I was looking at the total. I was imagining them in my life. I was imagining how I would use them in my lifestyle. How many times would I wear them? And I was getting really, really excited until I started to imagine how many times I would use them. And you guys, I came to a realization that I only go out twice a week. 
That's it. On the weekends. It's the only time I ever get dressed. And a lot of times I don't even go out then. But I do go to church every week. I digress. My point is I don't need a lot of cute clothes. I need very, very few cute clothes. If I'm only using my cute clothes twice a week, then I don't need them. I don't need very much as far as quantity goes. What I do need is more work clothes. So plain t-shirts, plain pair of shorts, stuff like that. That kind of takes away my excitement because I'm not excited to shop for work clothes. I'm excited to shop for the cute clothes. And I came into that realization on week one and that kind of deterred me. It made me feel like, you know what? I don't need those cute clothes. There's no reason for me to spend my money on those cute clothes. I have enough cute clothes for only wearing them twice a week. And I really don't want to buy work clothes. And that's the only thing that I could really justify buying. So because of that, I was able to step away until week two. On week two, I decided to let my inner bad girl come out and I said, fuck it. I'm going to buy whatever the fuck I want and I'm going to do it. So as I mentioned in my reevaluation week, I shared with you guys that I'm going to allow myself to buy two pairs of jeans, two pairs of shorts. Those are more so work related and also one dress. And that is because my husband and I have some fancier dinners and things to go out to. I said cinema in my last video. I meant symphony, you guys. It would not be a Melissa video if I didn't get at least one word wrong. So if you ever hear a word wrong, if you hear three, four, five word wrong, just replace it in your head with the correct word. I, I know I got myself wrong. I always do. It's a normal thing for me. It's just part of my character. So anyhow, my husband and I have some fun things coming up and I wanted to get a dress that would look nice and that I could wear. And as I've mentioned several times at this point, I have put on some weight, so a lot of my nicer dresses just don't work for me. So I bought all those items, you guys, in week two. I bought the two pairs of jeans, I bought the two pairs of shorts, and I bought a dress. You guys, as soon as I placed the order, I felt an extreme sense of guilt. And I was not expecting that because those were items I was allowing myself to buy. So I thought on it for a couple hours and I sat on it and I realized that the items hadn't been shipped yet and you guys will never believe what I did. I canceled the entire order. Yes ma'am I did. I canceled it all because I felt so guilty. I reached out to Lisa. Lisa is my accountability partner. She is also doing this low buy journey with me. I have her linked in every single video. We do our check-ins together at the same timeline. So if you guys are doing a low buy, it does help or it is helpful to see different people's perspectives. So I highly recommend checking out Lisa's video. And as I mentioned, it will be linked down below. So I checked in with Lisa. I asked or I talked to her about it. I told her about my sense of guilt. It wasn't being put on a credit card. I had plenty of money. I wasn't going to put me in a bind. It wasn't going to put me in a situation, but I still felt guilty about it. And I couldn't quite figure out why it was. We came to the conclusion that maybe it was the amount that I felt guilty about. After further processing it and thinking about it, I don't think it was the dollar amount. I think it was the clothing amount. I felt uncomfortable adding that many pieces into my wardrobe at one time when I'm trying to buy less. So I canceled the order, you guys. A few days later, after processing, after thinking about it, I did decide to buy one pair of jeans, one pair of shorts, and one dress. Now the dress was breaking my rules because I did not buy a fancy dress. I bought a very plain, simple denim dress that I could wear this summer. And it was really, really cute and I it was on sale so I just decided to go for it. It's something I can see myself wearing on repeat. It's something that I think will be in my closet for many, many years. So I didn't feel guilty buying it, but it did break my rules. I did not say that I was going to buy a casual dress in my low buy. Week number three was pretty fun. It was a turning point for me. I actually looked at my handbag collection and I felt like I have too much. So I am going to send off some bags probably to Fashion File. I'm hoping they will give me a decent enough quote that it makes it worth it. Now I'm not even looking to get half of what I paid for these bags because when I'm at the point where I feel like I have too much, it really does make me feel bad inside. It makes me feel very negative and that's not where I'm trying to be at. 
But with that being said, I do feel like because I'm at a point where I want to get rid of some bags, it also makes me not want to add any more bags to my collection. And that makes it really hard for purchasing my next bag for the year, which is a good thing. I feel like that's a really good thing. It's a good spot for me to be at. I do want to spread out my purchases. So that happened in week three. I also traded one of my bags. You guys, one of my bags that I was not loving i traded with another youtuber so that is very very exciting that video is coming up this saturday april 6th so keep your eye out for that i can't tell you what bag i traded because she is doing a video on it so we're doing a collaboration video where we swapped out bags and you guys i cannot tell you enough that it was a good trade it was such a good trade i am so so happy with the trade and i hope that she's just as happy as i am and then at the very tail end of week three, I took my kids out to Great Skate. You guys, it's been a long time since I've been to Great Skate. Great Skate is a skating rink here in Arizona. And it, I'm sure that they have different locations in other places, but that's what it's called here. I used to go there when I was a preteen and I took my kids there and I was surprised. It's been over 20 years, you guys, since I have skated and I decided to get out on the ring and skate with my kids and I had a blast. I had a really, really, really good time. My kids had a good time. They were all smiling, laughing. It was a couple hours spent. I think I spent a total of $150. And let me tell you guys, it was a good $150 spent. So this month in March, I actually decided to skip my taking a kid out every other week. If you're not new to the series, then you know that I take one of my kids out every other week for a one-on-one -on -one date. Well, this month was the month where I took them all out. So what I'm trying to do is every other week I take one of my kids out and they go in rotation and that way they get one-on-one -on -one time to really just pour into um, me. They get to pour into me with their conversation and I get to pour back into them and just really fill up their cup. And um, it's really good. It's been really, really good for us. But at the end of the cycle, at the end of once I've taken every single kid out individually, I want to take them all out as a group because we are a family, we are a unit, and it's important to do things together as a family as well. So that is what we did in March. And I, you guys, we had a great time. And then at the very beginning of week four, I actually got to meet up with my friend Julie from Agent Handbag Reviews. We went out to lunch, we went out shopping, we talked, we got to know each other. We had a great time. It was a lot of fun. She's just as sweet in person as she is on camera. I really, really enjoyed it. She is so authentic, you guys, and I, I just... I enjoyed it. I had a great time meeting her. She is the first YouTuber friend that I have ever met and it was it did not disappoint. She is she's lovely lovely and she is great. So that was a lot of fun. And I think that's it. I think that's all that we did in week 4. The last thing that I want to touch on is purchases. What did I purchase in the month of March? Now, you guys, I share with you guys every single purchase I make in the month of March or in a month, no matter how big or how small, unless it's something a necessity. If it's Too Faced, I'm not going to share that with you, you guys. If it is um, paying my bills, I'm not going to share that with you. If it's buying groceries, I'm not going to share that with you. But I do share any unnecessary needs that I spent money on in these videos. So I have a question for you guys. Do you guys want me to continue to share what I spend money on or can we just cut this part out of the video? I'm leaning towards cutting it out. I don't know if it's useful at all to anybody. I do think that a lot of people are interested in knowing what I bought to know whether I stuck to my low buy or not. But you guys let me know down in the comments below. If you are still interested in hearing what I buy every month, I will continue to share it. If you're not interested in it, then I'll just go ahead and cut it out. Okay, the first purchase I bought was actually at the very beginning of the month and I bought three cell phone cases. My son and my husband's cell phone cases were falling apart. I bought all of us when we got the kids new phones at the beginning of the year. I bought us all phone cases from case to fight not the beginning of this year the beginning of last year holy cow it's been a year already since i bought everybody new phones wow time flies anyhow 
I bought, um, my husband and I had bought all of us, all the kids, not myself and him, new cell phones at the beginning of last year. I think it was April of last year, actually. And we bought everybody new phone cases from Case Defy. And I'm telling you guys this story because if you guys are interested in Case Defy, I don't recommend them. The phone cases were falling apart. And so literally coming apart. Now they were used for a year, but I don't feel like I've never had a cell phone case fall apart before. So the fact that those cell phone cases are so expensive, they're so reviewed here on the YouTube community. They sponsor people quite a bit. So I wanted to give you guys my honest opinion and feedback about Casetify and I have not had any good luck at all. So my husband and my son's phone cases were falling apart and mine was starting to bubble up. So I bought my husband and my son a case, and because I bought two cases, I got one for free. So I got myself one. I spent a total of $87 on the three cases after shipping and everything, after shipping and tax. So that was my first purchase. Then I did buy one pair of shorts, one pair of jeans, and one dress, which I shared with you guys earlier. I spent $300 after shipping and tax on everything. I bought them all from American Eagle, not American Eagle. I bought them from Abercrombie. I feel like they were good purchases and I debated on sharing this with you guys, but I'm, I'm just going to because that's just who I am. I share everything. And I bought those at the beginning of the month and in week two, as I mentioned. And um, I have started a gut health journey so not a journey to lose weight but I have a lot of issues with bloating my stomach is pretty sensitive I do have a lot of digest digestion issues and I'm working on that and I'm trying to figure out what works for my body what doesn't work for my body I'm adding more fiber I'm changing my diet you guys so with that being said I have lost some weight not a lot but I have lost some weight it's not intentional I'm not trying to lose weight I'm trying to fix my gut health I'm tired of being in pain I'm tired of being having digestional digestional problems and so with that being said I had bought my jeans and shorts in a size 10 and the shorts still fit me perfectly, but the jeans are a little bit too big. So I'm going to hold off on buying any more clothing until I get my diet regulated. My diet meaning the diet that I'm eating, the food that I'm eating, not a diet plan to lose weight. I know I am clarifying this extensively, and that's because a lot of people like to twist the words on YouTube. So I'm just sharing with you, my diet is meaning the food that I'm eating, not a diet to lose weight. So once I regulate that and my weight regulates, I think that's a better time frame for me to buy my next pair of shorts and my next pair of jeans. But as of right now, I don't think that the jeans and even the dress was a good purchase. Unfortunately, I've worn both of them, so I can't return them um, because both of them are a little bit too big for me at this point. The next thing I bought was really, really fun, you guys, because my best friend, her birthday is the same day as my oldest daughter. So Liliana is turning 14. Can you believe it? Little old Melissa here is about to have a 14 year old. I cannot believe it. She's growing up before my very eyes and it makes me so sad. I've never thought about the end. The end meaning once they turn 18. I've never thought about once they get to turn 18 and they have the opportunity to leave home. I never thought about what that looked like until now. And it makes me sad, you guys. I don't want my kiddos to leave home. I don't want to come home and have an empty house. She's the oldest, so that will happen first. But I have four short more years with her. Obviously, I have her whole life with her. But I only have four years where, it's, where she's going to be for sure home. She has the opportunity to stay home after that, of course. But... I digress. I'm getting too emotional about this situation. I, my best friend's birthday and my daughter's birthday are the same day. So I did order my best friend and uh, I'm not going to say it because she watches some of my videos. I did order her something. I spent $175 on her birthday presents. Um, and I'm really, really excited to get, give them to her. I'm really excited this year because I, I thought about her gifts in a different light and I started to think, what would she want? What if I were out shopping with her, what would I see her pick up for herself? And I really dug into that thought process 
and I'm pretty dang sure I got her something really good. So I'm really excited to see if she will like it. And the last thing that I bought was Easter stuff. So Easter's coming up. It is on Sunday. I'm filming this on Saturday, the Saturday before Easter. And I bought my kids Easter stuff. Now I did buy them new Easter baskets because we are horrible about keeping track of our Easter baskets, you guys. Every year I say I'm gonna keep track of them and I never do. And so I bought cheap $1 Easter baskets and I bought them some things to put in their Easter baskets. I spent $300 on Easter stuff for six kids. I don't feel like that's too bad. I tried not to go overboard. I don't know when in my brain Easter became Christmas because I was going overboard for a little while there and I've decided to reel it back. My kids are getting a little bit older now. They don't need all of the, they never need it. Let's get real, they never needed all of the things but I did get them some fun things. So an example of that is one of my oldest daughter, actually Liliana, she loves to read. And so I got her a mystery book from TikTok shop. And then one of my, all of my kids love Mexican candy, spicy Mexican candy. So I got them all those pickle chamoy kits off of TikTok where they have all the spicy candy with a pickle and you eat it all together. And that's really fun. I'm pretty dang sure that they're gonna be so excited about that. They love stuff like that. My boys, I got them some Easter eggs that have the little, they have dragons in them. They look really, really cool. Again, I bought it off a of TikTok shop and they are fidget toys and they all love fidget toys. So things like that and then I got them some candy. So they all got one personal thing like my daughter with the book, the boys with the fidget toys. Well, my other daughter got a couple of makeup items. Um, my son, my oldest son, he's going to turn 15, you guys. I can't believe it. Um, he doesn't turn 15 until the end of the year. So we will have two 14 year olds at the same time. Anyhow, um, he just got a bunch of t-shirts cause he's very simple. He loves a plain, plain t-shirt and basketball shorts. That's his style. So I got him a bunch of t-shirts and he doesn't really like candy too much. Um, so yeah, that's, I just got them one thing each, a little bit special, and then I'm just going to do candy. And that to me is good enough. That's a pretty dang good Easter basket if I do say so myself. So that is how March went. I appreciate every single one of you guys for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble. I'm eager to see how long this video is because I have a good feeling that it's pretty long, but I did wanna share with you guys in detail, especially the mindset shift. Now, every single month I have a mindset shift, but this time I really, really felt it in the sense of the fact that I just don't wanna go shopping and I do wanna grow my accounts that are specific towards my husband and my goal that I'm so excited for. And um, that's it, that's a wrap up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Do not forget to share down in the comments below how you are doing on your low buy. If you are not doing well, do not worry. I do not shame anybody. We all make mistakes. I'm gonna have a month where I make lots of mistakes. I'm sure of it. I did make one this month. I bought a dress that I wasn't supposed to buy. It was a casual dress and I was supposed to buy a fancy dress. So we all make mistakes. I'm not going to shame you. I am going to uplift you. I am going to root you on. I am going to be proud of you. I'm going to be clapping for you. So please share your journey down in the comments below.